In this lesson, we are going to solve trigonometric equations. First, let us solve this. Cosine theta is equal to 1 half. I have my unit circle over here, and we want the point where cosine theta is equal to 1 half. Cosine refers to the x-coordinate of your angle. So you have this one. This is 1 half. And what would be this angle? So we have these two angles over here. What is the reference angle? We have pi over 3. Therefore, we have theta is equal to pi over 3. This angle on the fourth quadrant is 2 pi minus pi over 3, which is equal to 5 pi over 3. However, we have no restrictions for our angle. So, of course, we will include its terminal angle. So we add 2k pi where k is any integer. So these are the solutions. Pi over 3 and its coterminal angles. 5 pi over 3 and its coterminal angles. Next, we have 2 sine theta plus square root of 3 is equal to 0. Now our goal here is to isolate the term involving the trigonometric function. So let's isolate sine theta. We have 2 sine theta is equal to negative square root of 3. Dividing both sides by 2, we get that sine theta is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2. This angle is special. What is that angle whose sine is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2? Sine is the y-coordinate, so let's say this one. This is negative square root of 3 over 2. The angles are in quadrants 3 and 4. What is the reference angle? Since the y-coordinate is negative square root of 3 over 2, that is pi over 3. The angle on the third quadrant is pi plus pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 3. Take note that I no longer write plus 2 k pi because we only want our angles here to be from 0 to 2 pi. So therefore, it's just 4 pi over 3. And the angle on the fourth quadrant is 2 pi minus pi over 3. And that's 5 pi over 3. Next, we have tangent of theta minus pi over 2 is equal to 1. Now, Take note that your angle here is now theta minus pi over 2. So that you will not miss out any solutions to the equation, you have to find the interval containing theta minus pi over 2. And how do we do that? We subtract pi over 2 everywhere here. So we have theta minus pi over 2 is between negative pi over 2 and 2 pi minus pi over 2. So that's... 3 pi over 2. So that means we are only interested from negative pi over 2 here up to 3 pi over 2. What is an angle whose tangent is equal to 1? That angle is pi over 4. And another angle on quadrant 3 whose reference angle is pi over 4. Copy the angle that we have over here. Theta minus pi over 2. This angle must be pi over 4 and the angle on the third quadrant is pi plus pi over 4 so that's 5 pi over 4. These are the only two solutions for theta minus pi over 2 because it will start at negative pi over 2 so that starts here up to 3 pi over 2. So therefore we only have pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. Adding pi over 2 to both sides, we have pi over 2 plus pi over 4 and pi over 2 plus 5 pi over 4. That gives us 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. In our previous examples, we've encountered equations wherein we solved it by isolating one trigonometric function value on one side. Now, in this case, we still have one trigonometric function value. That's sine of theta. However, we have a quadratic equation here, which involves 
sine theta. What you need to do here is to transform this into its quadratic form. And how do we do that? We will make use of a change of variable. Let u be equal to sine of theta. Why did we let u to be equal to sine theta? Because you have sine squared theta and sine theta. So therefore, this equation becomes 2u squared minus 3u plus 1 is equal to 0. This is just a quadratic equation. Let us solve this by factoring it. We have 2u minus 1 and u minus 1. Setting each of the factors to 0, we get that u is equal to 1 half or u is equal to 1. Do not forget to switch it back to theta because remember that you are solving for theta. u is sine of theta so we have sine of theta equals 1 half or sine of theta is equal to 1. Sine of theta refers to the y coordinate on your unit circle. Let's say that this is 1 half what are these angles whose y-coordinate is equal to 1 half on the unit circle? The reference angle must be pi over 6. So therefore, sine theta equals 1 half means that theta is equal to, for the first quadrant, theta is pi over 6. This angle on the second quadrant is pi minus pi over 6. So that is 5 pi over 6. What is the angle whose sine is equal to 1? Again, sine refers to the y-coordinate, and that is this point. So that means that theta here is equal to pi over 2. These are the solutions to your equation. Next, let's have 3 cosine theta plus 3 equals 2 sine squared theta. Notice here that you have two trigonometric functions. You have cosine and sine. However, sine is squared. My technique here is to always express it using the trigonometric function without the square. Meaning to say, I will express sine of theta in terms of cosine theta. How come I want to do that and not express cosine in terms of sine? Well, if I do that, we will end up with square root. Let's say we do that. Cosine of theta would be square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. And we do not want to do that because it will have a square root. Although, of course, you can isolate this term involving the square root sine and then square both sides. That one would take a little bit longer to solve. Hence, I replace sine of theta by 1 minus cosine squared theta. Distributing our 2, we have 2 minus 2 cosine squared theta. Now we have one trigonometric function only, that's cosine of theta. This is quadratic in form because we have cosine squared theta and cosine theta. I'll just put everything on one side so that one side is equal to 0 because this is quadratic in form. 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. This is quadratic in form, so therefore, we let u to be equal to cosine of theta. This becomes 2u squared plus 3u plus 1 is equal to 0. And this factorizes as 2u plus 1 times u plus 1. And therefore, u is equal to negative 1 half or u is equal to negative 1. Do not forget to switch back to theta. Hence, we have cosine theta equals negative 1 half or cosine theta is equal to negative 1. Let us solve cosine theta is equal to negative 1 half. Cosine is the x-coordinate. So the x-coordinate in the unit circle must be negative 1 half. What is this angle whose x-coordinate is equal to negative 1 half? The reference angle is pi over 3. This angle on the second quadrant is 2 pi over 3 and the angle on the third quadrant is pi 
plus pi over 3. So that's 4 pi over 3. What about this one? Cosine theta is equal to negative 1. The angle whose x-coordinate is negative 1 is here. And this angle is pi. These are the solutions to your equation. Here's another example. Quadratic in form and you have two trigonometric functions, tangent and secant. As I have mentioned earlier, what I do is we will transform the one with the square. What is the relationship between tangent x and secant x? They are related by the Pythagorean identity, which is tangent squared x plus 1 is equal to secant squared x. So therefore, tangent squared x is secant squared x minus 1. I now replace tangent squared x by secant squared x minus 1. Simplifying, we get 2 secant squared x plus 5 secant x, 4 minus 2, so that's plus 2. We now have an equation quadratic in form. We take u to be secant x, and therefore we have 2u squared plus... 5u plus 2 is equal to 0. This factorizes as 2u plus 1, u plus 2 equals 0. And therefore, u is negative 1 half or u is equal to negative 2. Let us switch back to x. u is secant x, so we have secant x is equal to negative 1 half or secant x is equal to negative 2. Let's just write this in terms of cosine because secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Here we get that cosine x is 2 or cosine x is negative 1 half. However, is this even possible? Can the cosine of an angle be equal to 2? No. This is not possible because the range of cosine is between negative 1 to 1. So therefore, we will only consider this part. Cosine x is equal to negative 1 half. We had this earlier. Cosine refers to the x-coordinate. These are the angles. The reference angle is pi over 3. Hence, x is equal to 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Next, let us solve 2 sine x plus cosine squared x cosecant x is equal to 5 halves. We have three trigonometric functions here. Let me just write cosecant x as 1 over sine x. This equation has a denominator of sine x and 2. So let's get rid of those by multiplying both sides by the LCD, which is 2 sine x. We now have 4 sine squared x plus 2 cosine squared x is equal to 5 sine x. I have sine and cosine here. What do we need to do? Do we express sine in terms of cosine or cosine in terms of sine? Well, you have a term here of sine x which does not involve a square. So therefore, you express everything in terms of sine x. I have now replaced cosine squared x by 1 minus sine squared x. Let's simplify this. This is now quadratic in form, and therefore we let u to be equal to sine x. We have 2u squared minus 5u plus 2 equals 0, and this factorizes as 2u minus 1 times u minus 2. And therefore, u is equal to 1 half or u is equal to 2. 
Let's switch back to x, u is sine x. Just like in our previous example, this is impossible because the range of sine must be between negative 1 to 1. You cannot get a value of 2 for sine x. We now solve sine x equals 1 half. Sine of an angle refers to the y-coordinate on your unit circle. This is 1 half. And the angles would have their points of intersection with the unit circle here. And therefore, these are our angles. The y-coordinate is 1 half. What is the reference angle? It's pi over 6. And therefore, our x here is pi over 6. And the angle on the second quadrant, which is pi minus pi over 6, we get 5 pi over 6. In this example, we now have two angles. We have x and 2x. We also have different trigonometric functions, sine and cosine. The first thing that you have to do here is to make sure that the angles are the same. In order to do that, I will express cosine 2x wherein the angle is just x. Since I already have sine squared x here, I will use the identity for cosine 2x which involves sine x. And what is that? That is 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. The reason why I chose that is, again, so that we will end up with just one trigonometric function, sine x. Let us simplify this. We have 4 sine squared x minus 1 is equal to 0. And therefore, we have that sine squared x is equal to 1 fourth. Do not forget plus or minus square root. So this is plus or minus 1 half. Sine is the y-coordinate. So this is 1 half and negative 1 half. So our angles would be here. These are the points whose y-coordinates is negative 1 half and 1 half. What is our reference angle? This is equal to pi over 6. Hence, our angles are pi over 6. This angle on the second quadrant is pi minus pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6. This angle is pi plus pi over 6. That's 7 pi over 6. And this angle here is 2 pi minus pi over 6. That's 11 pi over 6. Here's another example. You have an angle which is x and 2x. We will express 2x in terms of x. And how do we do that? We use our double measure identity. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. Therefore, 2 gets cancelled out. In solving trigonometric equations, make sure that one side is equal to zero. Let me just put everything on the left-hand side. Notice that you have a common factor of sine x here. So that gives us sine x times quantity sine x minus cosine x. And therefore, we can set each factor to 0, we get sine x equals 0. And here, sine x minus cosine x is equal to 0. Let's just focus here first. If you have sine x minus cosine x equals 0, you have two trigonometric functions, and we do not want that. In order to remedy that, we divide both sides by either sine x or cosine x. Let's just use cosine x. And what do we get? Sine x over cosine x, that's tangent x, minus cosine x over cosine x is 1. So therefore, tangent x is equal to 1. First, let's 
solve the values of x for which sine x is equal to 0, sine of an angle refers to the y coordinate. So that means you are here or here. And hence, x is equal to 0 or pi. Next, for tangent x, what is that special angle whose tangent is equal to 1? That is equal to pi over 4. However, we have two angles, 1 in quadrant 1 and 1 in quadrant 3. But the reference angles are both equal to pi over 4. So therefore, we have here that x is pi over 4 and the other one is pi plus pi over 4. That's 5 pi over 4. Another example Sine 2x plus cosine x is equal to 0. Again, I will write sine 2x in terms of just the angle x using the double measure identity. So we have 2 sine x, cosine x plus cosine x is equal to 0. Remember, if you can factor out, factor out first. You have a common factor of cosine x. So you get 2 sine x plus 1 is equal to 0. And therefore, we can now equate the factors to 0. We get that cosine x equals 0. 2 sine x plus 1 is equal to 0, which gives us that sine x must be negative 1 half. First, let us solve cosine x is equal to 0. Cosine is the x coordinate of your angle and you will appear here because this is 0, 1, and 0, negative 1. The x coordinate is equal to 0. And therefore, what is our angle? x is pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. What about for this one? Sine x is negative 1 half. Sine refers to the y coordinate. So we go to the y axis. We are looking for the points whose y-coordinate is negative 1 half. And therefore, here are the angles. What is the reference angle? That should be pi over 6. The angle in quadrant 3 is pi plus pi over 6. So that's 7 pi over 6. The angle on the fourth quadrant is 2 pi minus pi over 6. That's 11 pi over 6. Next, we have sine 2 theta is equal to 1 half. Take note that you do not have a term involving theta. So that means that you do not have to write sine 2 theta in terms of theta only. So what you need to do here is you just first find the interval of 2 theta. From here, 2 theta is between 0 to 4 pi. This is to make sure that you do not miss out on any solutions. Here is my unit circle again. Sine refers to the y coordinate. And we have here your 1 half. These are the angles. What is this angle? This angle is pi over 6. So copy the angle, 2 theta. The first angle is pi over 6. Next, this is pi minus pi over 6. So that's 5 pi over 6. However, 2 theta is between 0 to 4 pi. So we can have one more round. We add 2 pi. Pi over 6 plus 2 pi is 13 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi is... 17 pi over 6. Can we still add some more? Well, if you add 2 pi here, you will get 13 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. That would be 25 pi over 6. And this is already greater than 4 pi. So therefore, you stop at 17 pi over 6. However, these are the values for 2 theta. To get the values of theta, we divide everything by 2. So therefore, the solutions are pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, 13 pi over 12, and 17 pi over 12. Next, cosine x over 2 is equal to 1. 
Just like what we had earlier, first get the interval containing x over 2. From here, we get that x over 2 is between, divide everything by 2, so we get 0 and pi. Therefore, we just have one trigonometric function and its value is equal to 1, which is special. So therefore, we proceed right to our unit circle. Cosine refers to the x-coordinate. And what is the point on the unit circle whose x-coordinate is equal to 1? It's this point. So therefore, our angle x over 2 is equal to 0. Do we have some more solutions? None. Because x over 2 is between 0 and pi with 0 inclusive. And hence, when we multiply both sides by 2, we also get that x is equal to 0. For our last example, we have 4 sine 2x minus 3 cosecant 2x is equal to 4. Take note that you have 2x here. So the first thing that you have to do is to always write the interval of the angle. So we have 2x between 0 to 4 pi. Next, we want to have one trigonometric function only. Cosecant 2x is the reciprocal of sine 2x, so therefore, I will write cosecant 2x as 1 over sine 2x. Let's get rid of the denominator by multiplying both sides by sine of 2x. We get 4 sine squared 2x minus 3 is equal to 4 sine 2x. Set one side to 0. This is quadratic in form. We let u to be equal to sine 2x. Therefore, we get 4u squared minus 4u minus 3. This factorizes as 2u minus 3, 2u plus 1. And therefore, solving for u, we get that u is 3 halves or u is equal to negative 1 half. Switch back to 2x. We have sine 2x equals 3 halves or sine 2x is negative 1 half. However, this is impossible because 3 halves is 1.5. This one is already greater than 1. Again, that cannot happen because the sine of an angle is between negative 1 to 1. So therefore, we just have sine 2x is equal to negative 1 half. Let us now go to our unit circle. Sine of an angle is negative 1 half. Sine refers to the y coordinate. And therefore, these are the points. The reference angle is pi over 6. Therefore, let us copy 2x. For the first angle, the angle in quadrant 3 is pi plus pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. The angle on the fourth quadrant is 2 pi minus pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. Can we do one more revolution? Yes, because 2x is from 0 to 4 pi. This one should be strict inequality because x is strictly less than 2 pi here. Let's add 2 pi. 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi is 19 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi is 23 pi over 6. Note that we stop here because if we continue we will already exceed 4 pi or you can also view this as two revolutions because 4 pi is two revolutions this is our first cycle and then this is for our second cycle notice that this is not yet our final answer because this is 2x we still have to divide everything by 2 and therefore our x is equal to the following Those are the solutions to this equation.